you're cruising through life not always knowing what direction you were headed? Let Live On Purpose with Dr. Paul Jenkins be your guide. Live On Purpose will give you insights into your life and show you how you can become the driver and captain of it. No more aimless wandering. By learning the principles that govern happiness and wealth, you will be able to make personal progress that you have only dreamed possible. And now, here's your host, the shrink who expands your life, Dr. Paul. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Live on Purpose Radio. This is Dr. Paul the Shrink who expands your life. I am thrilled to be here again with you today. I'm so glad that you keep tuning in. If you like this show, spread the word. If you don't like this show, I don't know why you're listening, but I'm glad you're here anyway. (laughs) You hear the chuckles of my guest. You know what? I think it's very important to keep your promises. And a while back, I had a guest on this show by the name of Kirk Weasler. And Kirk came on here, and he promised that he would return. I, and it was a promise I wanted to keep. And here you are. It's a promise I'm glad you've kept, actually, Dr. Paul. I'm so, glad, <laughs> I'm so grateful to be back. So well, grateful to be back. Welcome back to Live on Purpose Radio. Woohoo! Live on Purpose. We've, yeah. we've been in here having a good time, gee, for almost uh, 45 minutes or so. Well, yeah, then we had to get busy on this show. You know what? I've got to thank you because um, being a, a guest on your show, I was able to share with the people that read my thought for the day. That um, and uh, a lot of them mm-hmm. have approached me at different conferences or sent me emails, thanking me for the ability to listen to that show. They've enjoyed that. They've enjoyed you. They've been introduced to you, mm. and uh, so that's been a blessing to my life. And and they're thanking me because you're a great guy. And I'm thanking you because you're helping me do what I want to do. This is the this is a great principle, Kirk. Because when you when you get together with people who are like minded and who are who have a mission to go out there and help other people. Things start to click. Things start to happen, and exchange creates wealth. There is no question about it. And it just, aren't you just grateful? Okay, so here's, a, here's, a, here's something we didn't talk about that might just be our first story of the show. It could be. So, but when you think about this, uh, this, 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 this creating wealth, this creating um, abundance. Mm-hmm. Prosperity, happiness, yeah, this, whatever you want to call it. But the more, like I'm so grateful for you, right? This is like Thanksgiving time. It's time That's to right. reflect. I remember years and years ago, Right, so you're all about relationships and connecting people and helping people connect with truth and principles so they can have a more abundant life and live their life more on purpose. Mm-hmm. Well, years ago, I was kind of I had people in my life that I loved and respected. Mike Cottom, who I think you should have on the show, mm-hmm. uh, Don Spradley, my old Special Forces commander, mm-hmm. and and uh, Gordon Birch and other persons. So these are people in my life that that I was learning things from. They were offering me insights. You know what you say in your introduction: insights to help you live your life on purpose. Da 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 da. Right, mm-hmm. with greater happiness. Sure. So. I was on my way from one of these mentors to another, and I was thinking, man, I'm so, I, lo- I love this person so much, I can't wait to tell Mike about it. So was I, mm-hmm. right? So was mm-hmm. I, I go, Mike, you got to, and then as I'm on my way to Mike, all of a sudden, as I'm, as I'm on my way, I, I get a phone call from one of my other dear friends, and I'm like, I'm so lucky I've got the coolest people in my life. So then I had this idea, and the idea is, what would happen if I got the coolest people in my life all together in the same room? Mm. So, so I, I made a list. And then I called the first one. I was really nervous because to me, they were all big guys. They were all Dr. Pauls, right? They, they, were, they, had, they, had, they, had, they had credentials and curriculum and they, had, they, they were established. And I saw myself as kind of a young pup, but I saw them as the big people, right? So I called one of them and I said, you know, I've had this idea and the idea is I want to get all the people that are, that are affecting my life together and just, I want my friends to meet each other, people that are important to me. I want them to be, to know each other. Sort of a mastermind summit. So, right. So that's what, so I thought, well, okay. So I, so I, I kind of broached it because these are also very busy people. You want to respect the time. But my uh-huh. idea, so I called my first one. I said, what do you think? And Mike caught him. His response was immediately, Kirk, I would love to meet all your friends. When and where? He was just at the <laughs> drop of a hat willing to give up a day for this idea. I said, well, Mike, hold on. I don't have an agenda. I'm not really not sure what we'd do. I just wanted you guys to get together. He goes, I don't, I think it'd be better without an agenda. Yeah. Count me in, Kirk. Tell me the day I'll be there. Mm-hmm. So then I was like, well, okay. So then I called Don Spradling, my old special forces commander. And I said, Don, here's the idea. Still not very confident. Don's immediate response was, Kirk, I would love to meet your friends. Give me the day. I'll be there. Mm-hmm. And then I called and called and called and called and called. And um, of the 12 people I called, eight could come on a, any given date. And eight mm. came. We went up to Daniel's Summit. 
I called no, it. I didn't know what place. to call it. I called it the Passion Summit. The Passion Summit. The Passion Summit. And because these were eight of the most passionate people I'd ever met in my life, passion was the thing that they had in common. They all were from mm-hmm. all different industries and fields of expertise. And they came together, these eight most passionate people that I looked up to and admired. You know, imagine eight, imagine eight Dr. Pauls, right? In the room. Oh, that's a little scary. People that live their lives on purpose. But they're all, they were all purposeful, passionate, driven. Mm-hmm. And then, mm-hmm. well, here's another interesting thing, and this is key. They showed up to this summit, every one of them, even though they didn't know each other, even though they're from totally different worlds, they mm-hmm. all showed up with one thing in common. Well, probably several things in mm-hmm. common, but there was a physical manifestation. They all showed up with a notebook and a pen. Every one of these passionate, live on purpose people had mastered or figured out that one of the important principles to live a happy, fulfilling, rewarding life mm-hmm. is to be the buyer and carrier of empty books. They were both, they, every one of them, Boom, they sat down, they were shaking hands, introducing, da, da, da. When we finally got the meeting under control, boom, there was journals open. There was notebooks, Franklin planners open. There was pens on paper. Everyone there with no instruction, with no prompting. Oh, you should really take notes at the meeting. I mean, they were so far beyond that. They were like pages and pages Mm -hmm. and pages of notes. I have over capturing it. Yeah, trying to capture everything. And then what began to happen was this aggressive interview process where essentially seven adults would attack another adult and a verbal assault of, I want to know everything that you know that's made you happy and successful. In other words, they were experts at gleaning information and insights from others that would help them live their lives more purposely. Mm. Isn't that awesome? That is really cool. Now, let's contrast that with your basic seminar attendee. Not at your courses, mm-hmm. of course. But, oh, of course not. Okay, but okay, listeners, check this out. So today, <laughs> I'm, up in, I'm up in Salt Lake. I'm talking to... Let's not mention who I'm talking to because... Let's just say it's a conference of... Of people. Public, people. Public servants, perhaps. Not necessarily known for their enthusiasm. Well, okay. So let's just say that. So I'm the guest speaker, and they've asked me to do a couple breakout sessions. So they don't know me. I'm an unknown, mm-hmm. right? So I'm an unknown. I'm, so I'm at the back of the room, kind of fiddling with some stuff in my bags. The room is empty. The first reach of participants come into the room. They've got mm-hmm. the entire room to choose from. Right, they could sit anywhere. Anywhere. Empty room. They sat on the back row. Of course. So not only do they sit on the back row, but they're so absorbed in their apathy and their apathetic living and their, let's say, not purposeful living that they don't seem to notice me in the back. So I'm right behind Mm -hmm. them, kneeling down, messing with my bag, and they talk about, so you think this session is going to be any good? Mm. Who cares? I just got to look busy. My boss is here. I mean, <laughs> this one looked a little less boring than the other yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, it looked least. It looked like the least painful session. I mean, this. I mean, do you know what I'm saying? They were. They were. Uh-huh. They, they. They didn't. The contrast was they didn't show up looking for learning. They didn't show up looking for anything. They just wanted to pretend to look busy. They weren't. They weren't looking to live their life on purpose. In other words, they weren't one of your listeners, mm-hmm. Doctor Paul. Because people that are going to listen to your radio, they're listening for insights to help them keep their fire. Their fire's hot. Their the fuel up. You know, the bucket's filled. Mm-hmm. Contrast that with these people on the back row who, who are living a half-life at best. My wife calls them the walking dead. Some people go through life just trying to avoid all of the unpleasantries, <laughs> you know, and ah. not realizing that by doing so, they're actually creating more of that stuff in their life. Right. Oh, I'm so miserable. Well, I wonder why that might be. Hmm. I wonder why that might be. Let's do the math on that one, Einstein. So... So uh, I'm uh, I'm just I, whenever I come to Utah I go into Neaters because I know the owners of the Neaters I bread store. Love Neaters. I love Neaters. So There's the plug. Colleen, <laughs> Colleen, <laughs> Colleen Worthington, one of the owners and founders of Neaters, she happens to be there. I was in her store, the very first store that opened within a week, and I became I wanted to be their most raving fan, mad out of the box customer ever. Mm-hmm. And so these, she was there tonight. I t- gave her some of my books, and I said, Colleen, I'm glad you're here. I wanted to hug your neck. I want to buy four loaves of bread to take home to my family. Da 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 da. And we began to visit. And I said, what's going on? Well, we, ju- we just opened a store in Arizona. And so great things are going great for them. Mm-hmm. And then she gave this interesting truth. Think about our back row people. Think about mm-hmm. our passion summit mm-hmm. people. Think about you. Think about your listeners and the goals and hopes and dreams you have for them and they have for themselves. And listen to this key insight. She said, Kirk, she said, I said, so what's next? She goes, well, I want to do this and this. She says, she said, it's so good to be busy. And I said, isn't it wonderful? 
She said, Kurt, she said, here I am. I'm about to have my 18th grandchild. Mm -hmm. She said, I'm happy. I'm fulfilled. I'm busy. She said, so many of my friends that are my age are on Prozac. They're bored. They don't have meaning and purpose. They're, they don't know what to do with themselves or their time now that they're retired and have more time, supposedly. And she said, I don't have time to go fill a prescription. She said, nor do I have the desire. Mm. What do you think about that, Dr. Paul? You probably see a lot of um, mental anguish that the pharmaceutical companies you are trying know, to take advantage I do. of. <laughs> and I've had, you know that I'm coming from a, from a history of a, a mental health practice. I had a general outpatient psychology practice for 15 years, 12 years. I yep. can't remember how long. Before I transitioned into my current life coaching practice. Right. And I can't tell you. Well, I could tell you. You're a friend. Tell me. There and are tell your so, listeners. And, and you listeners. I love you guys. There are so many people who get stuck. And they don't even know why or how they're stuck. They just know that they're stuck. And there's all this captivity in their life. And this misery and this yuck, and they're just kind of wading through it. It's like the guys on the back row. They don't even realize what they're missing. And, and they continue to persist in, in doing the same things, and they keep getting the same outcomes. Mm. I, had, I don't know if I told you about the show that I did with Amanda Dixon. The title of the show was Get Off the Dead Horse. Or Get Off the Back Row. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and I love that analogy because when the horse is dead, get off. Get off. Don't continue to persist in the things that are not working. Well, that's just it. You know, the, the, the distance between the back row and the front row of this room was 40 feet. But the difference was so much bigger than that. So much bigger. In terms of the outcomes and the results that those people can get. Yeah. The whole, the whole spirit of... Uh, the, the spirit, the spirit, or yeah, the, the spiritual difference between those Passion Summit people that came in and just front mm -hmm. row Joe's pen at the ready, and and the sad observation I that I had today, you know, of these people in mm -hmm. the back row, and in that same session later, people came in and sat on the front row, and the difference between them and the light in their eyes, and the passion mm -hmm. and the tonality of their voice was significant, significant, measurable, so, noticeable. I wonder, listeners, as you're, as you're listening to Kirk, and I'm sitting here listening to you too, Kirk, mm -hmm. and just, just contemplating, okay, where am I sitting? Yeah. Where, where, yeah. where am I sitting? Where and are you sitting? Who is it that put my bum in that seat? Well, listen, it not only matters where you sit, but it matters how you sit. That's right. It matters how you sit. Let's talk about that after the break. I want to know about that magic tea thing, too. Let's talk about the magic tea when we come back from this great break. Listeners, you're listening to Live On Purpose Radio with Kirk Weasler and, and Dr. Paul. Dr. Paul. In today's world, people have become much more conscious of their health and wellness. Finding new and effective ways to combat the effects of disease, aging, and poor nutrition is more important than it has ever been as we look to improve our own life and the lives of those we love. Kayani is a rapidly growing nutritional supplement company that is marketing in over 20 countries. Kayani's products combine the nutritional benefits of well-known superfruits with Nobel Prize winning research and breakthrough science. Not only does Kayani help to improve the health and wellness of families, but through the amazing business opportunity that it offers, people like me have been able to create financial freedom. Kayani has the power to change your life, regardless of where you are or what your needs may be. Whether you are new to the network marketing industry or a seasoned veteran, you will find that Kayani has what you've been looking for. A well-financed, growing company with proven management to generate immediate income and the potential to allow normal people to succeed if they are willing to put in the time and effort. Kayani is a proud sponsor of Live On Purpose Radio. To learn more or to join our exciting team, please visit liveonpurpose.mykayanilife.com. That's liveonpurpose.mykayanilife.com. Thank you for joining me for the Live On Purpose Radio podcast. It is truly an honor to be a part of your prosperity team. Please visit my website, drpaul.org, to get connected with other tools for you and your family. 
there you will find links to my weekly e-zine, Empower, Harnessing the Power of the Mind, and to the free Parental Power Teleconference that I host every week with my wife, Vicki. You can also check out upcoming events or pick up powerful information products. Feel free to contact me directly with questions, comments, or to book me for your company or private event. Email me through Dr. Paul at liveonpurposeradio.com. Okay, Kirk. So there's this thing about a a magic tea. I love the magic tea. Magic tea has changed my life forever. I now try to give it to as many people as I can. It's amazing. You know, I didn't learn about the magic tea until I was in my 20s. But I'm finding people in their 40s and 50s that still don't understand the principle of the magic tea. And there's so many ways to look at this magic tea. Let's share it with your listeners so that they can harness the power of the magic tea and change their lives forever. Now, first we have... Do we have to get their credit card numbers and things? Because this is this is extremely there's, there's valuable stuff. So extreme. This is so valuable. But don't listen. Your well, de- your listeners your listeners deserve this. No credit card numbers need to be taken. Your listeners deserve this. So okay, brace yourselves. Everyone. Okay, now my tendency as a storyteller is to go all the way around the barn with this, but we'll see if we can keep this short and sweet. <laughs> the essence of it is that uh, I was a pretty poor high school student. And, um, and, uh, you Which know, it's hard to believe well, Kurt, it's, it's a bright a, guy like maybe you. some attention issues, but, uh, but my parents didn't medicate it out of me. They just let it be what it mm-hmm. was. And, um, uh, then went in the military. So I had acquired some disciplines there was, I was a missionary for my church for a couple of years, acquired some disciplines there. So now I'm at 27 years old and applying to some colleges and all the mm-hmm. colleges reject me. All the four-year institutions reject my application saying... They're looking back at your high school record, at my high school days saying, we don't think you got what it takes. Uh-huh. So I eventually get accepted at a community college. And even the community college, who accepts people, by the way, that are still having... That will get their GED at the college. Right? Okay. This community college. So, uh-huh. so they accept me, but on a waiver. And the waiver is that... Or the requirement is that I have to take a couple classes over that they are claiming in high school I didn't do very well at. Mm-hmm. And, um, mm-hmm. and, the, and I also am required to take a study skills class. And it was in the study skills class at age 27 that I learned about the magic tea. So okay. I'm in a pretty teachable place right now. I've been rejected by all these institutions. I'm now at this college that's accepted me on, a, on condition. And I'm feeling like my confidence has taken a pretty big hit. And you're willing to accept whatever you and can. I'm, you know, and I'm like, well, it's yeah. it's going to work, huh? it's going to work. And then this teacher on the very first day of class says, students, what would you say? If I told you you could increase your grade point average a half point to a full point just by where you sit in the classroom. Hmm. Well, I'm, you know, I'm, you know. Sign me up. Yeah, sign me up. I'm like, well, this is a no-brainer. If I can increase my, my grade point average a half to a full point just by where I sit, tell me where that seat is. I want the magic chair. And then she says, it's not a magic chair. It's the magic tea. So listeners, imagine the magic tea. Most of you already see it in your mind. The magic tea is obviously, of course, the first couple rows across the front of any room and down the center. As you visualize that mm-hmm. tea. Forms the letter T right there right? in the classroom. And students that send the magic tea, generally speaking, make a half point to a full grade point average higher. Now, I left that class thinking, well, you know, that's a no brainer for me. And the very first class that I went to after that class, I figured if the magic tea was good, then the heart of the magic tea has got to be the best. So I'm sitting in the heart, front and center of that next class. Mm-hmm. I would go on at this college. This, I would go on to make all A's. The first all A's I've ever made in my life. I would go on to make the dean's list. I would learn that that's not a bad thing. I'm not in trouble to be on that list. And I would go on to become a presidential scholarship recipient at this college. And I would go on to be offered a scholarship at one of the four institutions that rejected me academic and leadership mm. combination scholarship. So <clears throat> now is it all because of the magic tea? Well, I'm sure all the disciplines I acquired along the way helped, mm-hmm. but I've never forgotten the magic tea. Now the magic tea is mm. not just for a college classroom. I can tell no. you right now, Dr. Paul, the Weasler children all know about the magic tea. All my kids know about the magic tea. So you show up community <clears throat> event, church, yeah. whatever it is. My wife is a magic tea. Uh, she's a magic tea nut. And she was raised by a magic tea kind of a dad in England. So he was a front row Joe. So we're a front Mm -hmm. row Joe family. And we need to be because I can't talk magic tea and sit back row. 
Mm-hmm. Right. That's right. Because you're going to teach it, you better be yeah. acting it. So now the great thing, now listeners, there's a huge advantage to the magic tea besides great grades, right? Huge mm-hmm. advantage, and that is you can show up late to a lot of functions and get a great seat, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Because mm-hmm. I can show up three minutes before church and know that front pew is going to be open. It's almost like it's reserved for well, you. Well, it seems that way. Now, listeners, we don't need to go through this on your radio show unless you want to, Doctor Paul. But consider this for a second. The magic tea does work. Why does it work? Mm-hmm. Why does the magic tea work, listeners? Think, answer. Why does the magic tea work? What, what, what happens in the magic tea that makes magic happen? What is it that happens there? And then you can begin to explore that, and all of a sudden you can begin to look at principles because you teach true and correct mm-hmm. principles on your radio show about the power of connection. I'm less likely to fall asleep. I'm more likely to feel connected. I'm going to feel a little closer. There's going to be less distance between myself and the fountain of learning. Less distractions take place, right? There's not something between me and the fountain of truth, right? Mm-hmm. There's other things that happen there too. Community happens there. And mm-hmm. community is, I'm sitting there in the magic tea with kids have already figured this out. Instinctively or, or consciously, mm-hmm. who, who's sitting in the magic tea? Students who don't want to be distracted. And when the professor says, I might recommend you guys get in study groups, I'm surrounded by eagles. They don't know Turkey Weasler sitting there, right? I'm a, I'm a kid in the magic tea, right? Because you're disguised as an eagle. Yeah, now. I'm disguised as an eagle because this I'm in the eagle's nest. And so right. you you want to be in a study group? Now I'm in a study group with Dr. Paul and you know and J- Craig Rollo. I'm in a study group with some guys who already know how to make A's and already know how to effectively study. And now I'm going to pick up their best habits, best practices, and implement them, incorporate them in my life. In other words, it was kind of a mini passion summit. I'm connected mm-hmm. with eagles, the magic tea. Mm-hmm. It matters where you set. It matters where you set. It's dramatic where you set. It matters where you, it matters how you set. There might be some people out here listening today, Kirk, who aren't quite sure about that. Maybe maybe they don't quite believe that there's any magic in this tea. There is so much magic in the tea. So much magic in the tea. Well, I, you think so. I wonder what they could do hmm. to find out. Well, I guess they, you know, if you've never set in the magic tea, I guess it would be as easy as give it a try. I don't know. Can I, can we put part mm. two on this thing? Do you mind? Right. Can I jump in? Go okay. to part two. Well, I'm, I'm a guest. I feel like I'm dominating the, the airwaves here, but let me just listen. You listeners, this is, this is cool stuff. So my, my boss, Art Coombs, you know, Art, you know, Art I Coombs. had lunch with Art last week. So, so, so Art was a great mentor for me as a, as a, as a, as a young you know, uh, when I was at his, one of his companies he was building, I was a, he took me under his wing. And, and about that time, he was trying to help me be a, a greater student. So between him and a guy named Jim Rohn, um, I was getting some feedback that says, and the feedback was, go be the buyer of empty books. The uh, buyer of empty books. Be the buyer of empty books. And what Jim Rohn mm-hmm. teaches in, in his training and what uh, um, Art Coombs encouraged me to do was to go buy an empty book. And the idea behind buying an empty book is, because my first thought was, Heck, the ones with the ones with words in them cost quite a bit. I'm not going to spend fourteen dollars on an empty book, but I bought mm-hmm. an empty book, and so I've got this empty book because I'm teachable and I want to be a good student. So essentially, a journal, a journal, essentially. Mm-hmm. But I'm not a dear diary guy, and, and that wasn't the purpose of this book because I wasn't going to do that because because mm-hmm. I've, I've never done that. But I've got my empty book now because I'm teachable. I've got a pen, and I carry this empty book with me for a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. My mentor says, "All right, open up your book, Kirk. What have you got in there?" Well, I don't have anything in my book. You've just been carrying it around. I've been carrying it around. Very obedient, but I'm carrying the book around. So (laughs) so here's the coaching I receive, all right? Kirk, it might be helpful if the next time you go into a meeting, you open it up, take the lid off your pen, lean forward, put your hand and pen at the top of the paper like you're about to write something down that's very important, very profound. Expect that you're going to hear great truths and insights and you're ready to capture them at any moment. Mm-hmm. So I did. And I found that it's not just important where you sit, but how you sit. There's a posture and spirit of a student. See, remember the great truth is when the student is ready, mm-hmm. the teacher will the appear. The teacher will appear. Well, what if the teacher's always there? What if the teacher, well, that's not the issue. The issue is always the student. Mm-hmm. And the student being ready. So how is a student ready? What does that mean? We got to ask ourselves, listeners, what does it mean to be the ready student? Well, the ready student, it wants and is eager to learn. Like my friends at the Passion Summit, they came in immediately prepared, disciplined, and eager to capture learning. 
That's right. You know, last week on this show, Kirk, we had a discussion. I, I I was talking to Leslie Householder. She's the author of the Jackrabbit Factor. Okay, fantastic you, book. You quote her quite a bit in your in your uh, weekly message. So is that on your reading list yet? The Jackrabbit Factor. It is now. Well, it's on my reading list, but it's there, I got a stack, Doctor Paul. I've got a stack of books. I got a speed reading class for you too. Anyway, uh, well, we'll have, yeah, play that commercial again. <laughs> Stay tuned, <laughs> in, you guys. We're gonna keep doing that until until we reach everybody who wants to be reached. But anyway, in this discussion I was having with Leslie, she used an analogy that I just, I loved. I was really ringing with it. Okay. And it has to do with a radio. And a radio is just this box that's sitting in a room. Now, what if you want classical music? Okay. Well, you go tune in to a classical station. And right. as soon as it's tuned in, boom, there's the classical music. Right. And it's really cool. Now, what, did, what happened? Did the radio go out there and grab the classical music? Or was it already there? It was already there. It was oh, already there. What a great... Floating what a, around. Now you want a different kind of music? Adjust your frequency. It's there. What kind of stuff do you want to pick up? Oh. And tune into it. What a you great analogy. Adjust your own frequency to that. What a great analogy. So I'm looking at the magic T. Okay. And I'm thinking, you know, there's nothing really magical about the T. There's nothing really magical about the seats. Except that when you put yourself, when you tune yourself into that frequency, right. some really cool stuff starts to happen. And I'm looking here on the table. I see one of my favorite books, The Dog Poop Initiative. It's a great book. I know the author. I do, too. By Kirk Weasler, everybody. Uh, that should be on your reading list, too. And you don't need a speed reading class to read that one. Hey, there's content there. There's great content there. But if it takes you more than five minutes to read this book. That's true. Not many words. It's, it's, it's a picture-driven <laughs> Then concept. you don't speak yeah. English or German <laughs> or Hebrew. But I'm looking at this word initiative. Right. Initiative is one of those characteristics that you can tune into. If you can get yourself on that kind of a frequency, guess where you're going to sit when you go in the room? Mm. Yeah. There's no question. And there's a small percentage of people who just do this naturally. Very and they small. inspire the rest of us. <laughs> yeah. That's why this book has caught on so much. Mm. Because it's inspiring. And we want to be the kind of person who's sitting in the magic tea, the kind of person who's tuning into that frequency that's just abundant. It's it's um as I talk to these these fairly disconnected people today, um we I, I just said, you know, let's talk candidly. In the third session, I said, let's just talk candidly here. You know, we, how many of you came to this session because, not because of the title, but because now that, now you've had some exposure to me, you came in here honestly because your buckets are empty. And three quarters of the hands in the room went up. They came in there, they felt like their buckets are empty. And they were looking for something to fill their buckets. Let's talk about that when we come back. You gotta have a full bucket. Gotta have a full bucket. We'll fill them up. Come on back. This is Shay Larson, IdeaOrbit.com, with the World of Ideas Report. Is it required to receive before giving? According to Blake McCoskey, you should give first, then receiving is just a result. The 29-year-old business phenom was traveling in Argentina when a philanthropic idea hit him. Blake noticed that most of the people in the villages did not have shoes. Their feet were injured and diseased. Instead of creating a charity and going through fundraising to help, Blake decided to start a business. He designed a pair of shoes using an authentic Argentinian look, but using upgraded materials for support and durability. He decided to sell the shoes for $40, which included enough profit to donate a pair of shoes to someone in Argentina. Every time someone buys a pair of Blake shoes, they feel good about helping someone else. His original goal was to sell 250 pairs of shoes his first six months so he could donate 250 pairs of shoes to those in need. Well, 
The story took off better than Blake supposed as over 10,000 pairs of shoes were ordered and donated in his first six months of business. In two years, Blake has sold and donated over 63,000 pairs of shoes, created a lot of success, and helped a lot of people with his giving idea. This is Shay Larson, IdeaOrbit.com, with the World of Ideas Report. I've got a great idea, wouldn't you like to know? You probably can't bear it, so I guess I'll have to share it. I thought of it a moment ago. The first responsibility of a leader is to define reality. The last is to say thank you. In between, the leader is a servant. Max Dupree. Okay, there was some talk about buckets and filling, and I love buckets. You're a bucket filler, Dr. Paul, no question. Let's get those buckets filled up. Well, what are you talking about anyway, Kurt? Well, when I, I said, well, why are you here? You know, why, why, why this session? Lots to choose from. Why this, why this session? And then, but nobody was really ready to articulate it. So I said, well, can we be integral? And so well, why are you here? How many of you feel like you're, you know, you really just want your battery recharged. You want your buckets refilled. Then the hands went up. Mm -hmm. Okay. And these and I, are people who had some experience with you, or well, they had some exposure, and and, and they, they about saw filling they, buckets. They saw that some, here's this guy's enthusiastic. He's got his light, you know, a, 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 that three click bulb. He's mm -hmm. got this thing all the way up to the third click. Whatever. I'm not. I'm not trying. Oh, look at me. But I'm just saying. Well, but incidentally, can I just comment about that, sure. Kirk? Because when we talked about tuning in before and the energy level. Right, you pick up on this, and it's contagious. It's contagious, and it and what's it? You know, is it more fun to be around someone who's in a state of growth and development, or in a state of stagnation? Mm -hmm. Growth and development. In other words, these people are attractive. That's right. <laughs> They're attractive to us. They're attractive. If, even if you think about it in terms of magnetic or electromagnetic force, the more energy that's put into that force, the more attractive it is. You ever seen an electromagnet? There we go. So, so, bam. So I said, well, so I said, how many of you, uh, I said, because you know what, this is great, but you know, we, we get all cynical because we go to some, we go to maybe a Tony Robbins seminar or we go to uh, some type of Mo Brian Tracy and, and the cynics go, yeah, I was fired up for a couple of days, but then it kind of faded. And, and then it's actually because I got excited for a couple of days, it, I felt better. Now it actually feels worse. And so now they're more cynical than they were before. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that's where Zig Ziglar used to be so cute when he'd say, well, motivation is like brushing your teeth. You know, you need to do it every day. You know, it's like eating. You need to do it every day. You need to feed that fire every day, but you've got to take some ownership for that. And that's why, you know, mm -hmm. you, you want a Dr. Paul podcast every day or once a week, but you've got to build things in your life where you're kind of, you're kind of keeping your juices full. Mm -hmm. So I said, listen, I said, you know, I said, this is great. I'm glad you're here and I'm glad you think that I can help with this, but we really need to own our own. Right. Mm -hmm. Cause if you think, if we think we're going to get this from the company, we're wrong. If we think we're going to get this from it, right. We need to be the givers of this gift. What, what it is that we all want more of, there's a good chance we're giving very little of and we're playing the mm -hmm. victim all along the way. It looks like this. Yeah, you know, I, oh, speaking of energy. So, so, okay. so I had a bad day and I got a, I got a big thing at night. So I'm going to just, you know, I'm just going to lay low today at work. Just going to lay low. Just going to do the minimums. I'm just mm -hmm. going to try and live under the radar. Just kind of squeak Just kind of squeak by. And tonight, then I'll have some energy to go out with my friends, the movies, whatever. Right. So I, I lay low. I kind of just do the minimums. Just try and I try and hide all day, and then finally don't overdo it. Finally, I get home and my friends are okay. You ready to go? I'm like, wow, oh, man. No, you know what? My job is so bad. Even though I laid low today, it still sucked me dry. Right. Mm -hmm. And what really happened was I violated my own sense of integrity today. They think it's the job that right. sucked them dry. But you get what you give, and since I gave less, I received less. Right, mm -hmm. right. Since I gave less energy, I received less return. You get what you give, and so as you give good feelings and positive energy, 
Now, here's the other thing that, that, that my little friends are guilty of, and me too, I'm no, I'm no exception, I've done this, where you're going to go out there and do the good deed, mm-hmm. but you're not doing it from a genuine place. In other words, I'm going to show everyone how good my deed is and make sure that they know they owe. Mm-hmm. So now I'm doing it, but with an expectation that goes before. It's like, hey, you know, Dr. Paul, I'm treating you nice, so I want you to treat me nice. And it'd be even nicer if you tried to, treated me nice first. That's right. Right? But remember, it was my idea that you treat me nice first and then I'll treat you nice. So it's still my idea. So you still, see what I'm saying? So, so all of a sudden, we, 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 so we're going never to, catch up. We go into this thing with the wrong expectation. We go in this thing with the wrong energy, the wrong attitude. And then we're sucked dry. And then we get home not feeling good about ourselves because we've robbed ourselves. We haven't been true to ourselves. We violate our integrity. But you know what? I can't take personal responsibility for that. So I need to blame the company. Mm-hmm. And since there's so much cynicism and we've got the office, we've got great shows that model this for us. We just blame the company. We blame the boss. We blame whoever's not in the room because they can't fight back. And then we just said, well, they're this and they're that. And, and then now we're building bad energy for tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And then we're on the cyclical down crash and burn. So I said, okay, does that sound familiar? Lots of nods around the room. Mm-hmm. Everyone, mm-hmm. you know, everyone own a little bit. So how are we gonna how are we gonna pull this plane out of a nosedive? How are we gonna crawl out of the gutter and take this thing to higher ground? Mm-hmm. Now there's the question of the day, right? What is it that we can do, and can we start right now? Mm-hmm. And you know what? I told him it's as easy as sitting in the magic tea. Because mm-hmm. the question you ask, I told the story, and the question you want your listeners to consider was, yeah, but what if I don't believe you? You got to try All it. Right. You got to try it. So I met a seminar at the Muhammad Ali Center, wherever they built that. Louisville, I think. They built the Muhammad Ali Center. So I don't know. What, mm-hmm. I think that's, so mm-hmm. I'm, I'm doing a seminar there. There's a, another presenter there. And we're talking. And he says, you know, he says, I've noticed that people generally walk in the room one of two ways. And I go, mm-hmm. one of two ways? I never considered this. Tell me. So he said, you can walk in the room one of two ways. I now do this with audiences. I actually physically leave the room and walk in. So imagine I'm walking in the room now. You see me walking in the room or Dr. Paul's walking in the room. He walks in the room. He throws his hands wide almost like the Fonz from Happy Days. And he goes, hey, I'm here. What's up? <laughs> What's going on? I'm here. The Fonz has entered Okay, the room. so I'm here. In other words, that way is it's all about me. Way number mm-hmm. two. The second way to walk in the room. You walk back out, you walk in the room. This time you walk in the room. As soon as you walk in the room, you see someone across the room that's there. You lock eyes with them. You light up when you see them. You walk over with your hand extended and go, oh, you're here. Mm-hmm. The difference between I'm here and you're here is the same as the difference between the back row and the front row. It's huge. As you walk in the room and I see Adam over there who's mixing the sound and helping run this, this radio podcast. I see Adam. Oh, Adam, you're here. I light up when I see him. I acknowledge him. I set the tone of energy. I set the spirit of our relationship. I've just dialed it up. I've got us tuned into that right frequency, that right, that, that, that's the right one. It's the mm-hmm. more better frequency, right? It's the purposeful one. Does that well, make sense? You say the right one. Or a better one. It's, which one do you want? Well, there we go. You know what I well mean? Said, well said. Because you can, you can sit in the magic X or W or what? What's the opposite of the magic T? I don't, <laughs> I don't know. know. I don't but know. you're in the you're in the nether regions. You're clear out there, right. right? You can sit there, and predictably, it's going to create a certain kind of an experience for you. Is that the one you want? Well, and if so, that's the right place to sit. Yeah. I'd like to feel a little disconnected. I don't want to really be tied in. I certainly want to gain any insights. I'm hoping I'll be a little more drained when I leave. Yeah, I'd like this just to you know suck up a couple hours of my life, and then I'll go home and complain just about it. Do a leaky bucket thing. Yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe I'll just back here and tap some holes in the bottom of my bucket. There so you make go. sure it don't hold any any love or good, good feelings. So we, we so we change the energy in the in, in the room by the way we walk into the room. We change the energy in the relationship by the way we walk into it and acknowledge the relationship. We change and we start that today. I said, so if you're feeling a little drained and empty today, there's a way that you can fill it up today. Mm-hmm. You can do it right now. Do it now. Do it now. It's a choice. And do it again. Sure. Said, yeah, when you walk into the next room you walk into, immediately lock eyes and acknowledge someone. Just charge up and go, oh, you're here. I'm so glad you're here. Let them mm-hmm. know you're glad they're there. Forget about you being there. So glad you're there. And then watch the energy shift and then go, man, that felt good. Yeah, that was a drop in your bucket, buddy. And then watch the dominoes start to fall yeah. too. Because that person that you just lifted, what are they going to do now? Oh, it, it, it's, the, it's the little thing that, that, 
that's everything. And then mm-hmm. the cumulative effect of doing these little things consist- consistently and consecutively, and the cumulative effect of that can just be phenomenal. But the little change, the little shift, um, well, it shifts everything. Mm-hmm. Love it. And that energy will travel and radiate and cause vibrations to happen so, all around it. So we're talking about where you sit. We're talking about how you sit. We're talking about the way you walk into the room can mm-hmm. immediately affect a positive difference, not just for you, but for others. And as it affects others, they reflect that back to you while la buckets filled. So Kirk. Yes. You've talked to a lot of people about this. I have too. What about those folks who are saying, sometimes I just don't feel like it. Hmm. You have an answer to that. Okay. The answer is, Kirk, you're so happy all the time. I mean, do you, you, do you ever have a down day? Mm-hmm. You get this sometimes, I'm sure. Yeah, don't you? Yeah. And then, <laughs> yeah, I'm having one right now. That's why I'm so happy, right? Because I'm feeling a little drained. I just got off a long flight. I just did three programs. And so the best way for me to get my energy back is to just put a great big smile on it and give some energy. And that's not mm-hmm. faking it till you make it. That's telling your body that you're in charge. You're consciously in charge of how I feel and my face and how I look and how I sound. I'm in charge, doggone it. You match where I know I want to be. And my mm-hmm. body comes up. And, and then as I reach out and acknowledge people, all of a sudden my energy matches where I want to be. I'm in mm-hmm. charge. That's right. And it's, it starts with a choice that you are going to create a certain kind of an experience. You having, for, a, bad, you having a bad day? You for know, yourself and for others. Yeah, I was. Mm -hmm. I was until I decided not to, until I realized I was. And I said, you know what? I got to get out of this car. I got to walk on the balls of my feet. I got to, I got to put some spring in my step and I got to get that smile all the way to the top of my cheeks. And when I, right, Mm -hmm. that 30 minute, that 30 minute drive home tonight, I'll take the red eye home. I'll catch the red eye home, Mm -hmm. right? I'll catch the red eye home and I'll, I'll try to sleep on the plane, but yeah, I could do that when I was younger, but these days, right? Right, I know. So then I'm going to get in my truck. Then the flight home will be okay. My hardest time is from the airport in Atlanta, that 30 minute drive, mm-hmm. from, right to Peachtree City. That 30 minute drive, that's the drive that drives me nuts. For some reason, I can fly for four hours, but that 30 minute drive, I just can't wait to be home. Mm-hmm. I used to listen to music and talk radio. I don't. That 30 minute drive is sacred time now. That's a time where I reflect on the man I need to be. When I walk in that door, mm-hmm. I'm trying to imagine what have my kids been doing and my wife been doing when I've been gone for the two days. She's been mom and dad. You know, what does she need me? What is it? What am I? My boys are want to wrestle. My girls, my four year old's going to want a surprise. What kind of man do I need mm-hmm. to be when I walk in that door? What kind of husband? What kind of father? What kind of friend do I need to be when I walk in that door? And that 30 minutes is my prep time. And it's not about how tired I am or my jet lag butt drag. Mm-hmm. It's not about me. It's about the man I need to be when I walk in that door. And I visualize it. I see it, I create it, and then I live it and I experience it. And since I've made that Mm -hmm. disciplined practice a part of my life, by the way, an idea I picked up from my guys at the Passion Summit, a couple of them do things like this. That's great. That's changed my life Mm -hmm. in a very positive and powerful way. And it's changed my family's culture in a very positive and powerful way. That's living on purpose. I want to be like you when I grow up. (laughs) Kirk, you're awesome. Stick with us. We've got one more segment here. Woohoo! When you dream, dream big. Dream This is Kirk Weasler to tell you about morebetterbooks.com. Morebetterbooks.com is where you can find more better books for a more better life. Not only that, let me tell you about some of the very fun and cool select titles on morebetterbooks.com. You'll want to get a copy of The Dog Poop Initiative. This best smelling book could change your life forever. It certainly changed the lives of thousands of Boeing employees as well as school teachers, parents, leaders across the United States and in Israel and in Germany. And you can get your own copy at morebetterbooks.com. Whoa, that's not all. What about The Cookie Thief? This classic tale told in a rhyming format, fully illustrated with very fun hidden messages. Pick up a copy now today on morebetterbooks.com. Other great titles there, Finding Your Pathway to Mastery, Beyond Illusions, Make It Great. These titles are only available on morebetterbooks.com. Go to morebetterbooks.com today and begin to have a more better life and live that life on purpose. 
Raising kids is one of the most challenging and rewarding experiences we can have in life. Your children didn't come with an owner's manual, so it's up to you to learn whatever will assist you in your role as a mom or a dad. Join me and my husband, Dr. Paul, for a free weekly discussion about all of the hot topics in parenting. Listen to what others are saying about these calls. By applying the things I've learned through the parental power calls, I'm finally becoming the mom I always thought I would be. I really like to use parental power as kind of like a reference book. So as I have concerns with my parenting, I like to be able to look up on the blog and then listen to whatever podcast seems closely related. So I like the variety of of topics, the variety of age groups that are addressed. I'm on the parental power calls as often as I possibly can because I know I'm going to come away with something I can apply to being a parent that very day. Let us join your parenting team through parental power. Just send an email to Dr. Paul at liveonpurposeradio.com to register for the live calls. Or just check us out first through the link at drpaul.org. All of the previous calls are posted on our blog site, where you can also add your own input. Let's team up to start parenting on purpose. And when you laugh, be sure to laugh out loud, because it will carry all your cares away. No, Kirk, we're, t- we're talking here during the break about uh, family. Yeah. And you know, when we're, when we're on the mics, we're not talking as much about some of the personal things that we might discuss mm-hmm. during the breaks and things like that. But I know that, that at your heart and at your core mm-hmm. is your role as a husband, as a father, mm. your family. Mm. No that's, question. That's the key. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm putting together some some new programs and processes to help families and to, and to really strengthen those key relationships. But I wanted to give the listeners just a little bit of a feel for who you are that way. Well, do, do you mind sharing? Not, not at all. And I'm very excited. I, I hope that, I don't know if what podcast you'll talk about these programs you're putting together, but you've told me a little bit about it. I think they're very exciting programs that are going to mm-hmm. help families have greater resources and fun resources that are very accessible. Mm-hmm. Um, I love today. I, I, I have a tradition. Whenever I give a presentation, I'm going to include pictures of my family. Mm-hmm. And, um, and that's been something that's helped me build rapport because you don't want to be up there as a speaker and be an expert. Your expertise sometimes gets, gets in the way. I want them to know, Hey, I'm a dad first. I'm a dad. I'm a husband. Um, I've got some expertise perhaps in building corporate culture, but these are the, my priorities. This is my number one and audience. You're my number two, right? Mm-hmm. I told, that doesn't offend anybody too much, probably. Well, I mean, number two or poo, I don't know. Uh, if, they, <laughs> if they don't associate with a book, we do pretty good. There you go. But today a guy came up to me and says, Kirk, you mentioned something in one of your stories about uh, monthly dates with your kids. Mm-hmm. And you also said you'd try and go on a weekly date with your wife. Well, that was to set up a story. I just mentioned it. It, was, you know, it all took place in less than 10 seconds when I said it. But this guy was king, and he says, I've, I've been doing the, the, the weekly date with my wife. He said, but I don't understand this monthly date with your kids. I've heard other people talk about that. What do you do? And I said, well, I said, I got this idea from someone at the Passion Summit. (laughs) He's got six children and he tries to have a meaningful date with them individually once a month. Now, what's a meaningful date, right? Because all of a sudden, you know, some listeners are like, I don't have time for that. I don't have the resources for that. Well, meaningful date for my son, Josh, age nine is, well, age nine this Friday is Dunkin' Donuts on Saturday. And Josh is my son that I love that needs more time of this sort with his dad than the others. Mm -hmm. So Josh and I usually every Saturday are down at Dunkin' Donuts. We get the exact same donuts. We sit at the exact same table if it's available, and we spend that time. So it's a Dunkin' Donut trip. It's $4 and two hours, Mm -hmm. right? Not that Dunkin' is that far away, but we do other things while we drive around because we don't want to just rush right Mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. Brooklyn, she's my four-year-old. Her monthly date's a little different. That usually is, she'll go with me to the bank to put some checks in. We just spend time. But, but it's the idea that she's going on her date with dad. That's the main thing. Mm-hmm. That she gets a sucker and a hug from the bank manager or an ice cream cone along the way. That's mm-hmm. fine. Mm-hmm. Brittany, she's 13 now. The dates have changed. Now she likes to go to Abercrombie and Fitch kids. or mm-hmm. either she, she goes somewhere to buy some, some shirt or whatever. Mm-hmm. And um, Jacob, Jacob, he's pretty flexible as long as we, he comes home with some type of a Lego contraption we're good to go right so but those are the dates and so so he asked me about those dates 
Um, we did something kind of fun as a, a family activity the other day. Rebecca went for a walk with Brooklyn. She had heard from a lady at church about this idea. So she went for a walk with Brooklyn. They held hands and went for a walk, and they collected leaves that were falling on the beautiful trees in Georgia. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And my job was to draw a tree without leaves, you know, just mm-hmm. a brand, like a, a, a winter tree uh, on a big piece of poster board. And then our family activity was about gratitude. So then I covered the tree with the glue, and then we would stick a leaf on the tree. And mm-hmm. as we stuck, we'd have to say something we're genuinely grateful for, and then we would push our leaf on the tree the, of the leaves that they gathered. And mm-hmm. so we re-leafed this naked tree. It became our gratitude tree, and it was kind of a fun thing. You know, I, I, think, mm-hmm. that, I think that gratitude, um, gratitude was one of the things we talked about at that seminar today with those adults as well. You know, if we get caught up thinking about all the things we expect uh, or hope for that aren't being met, we're going in the other direction as mm-hmm. of being focused on gratitude. I mean, you're as a, Look, as, a, as, a, as a therapist with your training. The focus makes all the difference. And I have to tell you, Kirk, I've had situations in my office where people were literally suicidal. I mean, they are thinking, I'm out. I'm done. I've had an, I'm done. Stop the ride. Let me off. Wow. And the thing that saved their life was gratitude. How do you mean? What did you do? What did you do to get them thinking differently? It's an intervention that I do, and I still do it with with my clients. Um, I do it with my kids too. Adam might think about some of this as we're talking. But uh, so wait. So you're saying that the listeners right now might be able to take a, a couple insights from this? And this is simple. Share, share it's, and tell. Now, don't confuse simple with easy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> because there's a big difference. No, I, this I, is simple. Okay, go ahead. It's not easy because when you when your mind gets into this victim mode, you know, and your life sucks, it it's the last thing you want to do. But the intervention is this, and I've shared it with, with you listeners before on this show. Well, share it again because Kirk is here taking notes. Got to, the pen at the ready. <laughs> Here's, here's what you do. You make a list. You make a list of things for which you are truly and sincerely and genuinely grateful. Mm. Gratitude has a power, Kirk. It, it switches a switch in your brain. In fact, I was, um, I was just reviewing recently a fabulous book by a man named uh, Fred Luskin. Dr. Fred Luskin at Stanford University wrote a book called Forgive for Good. And in this book, he lists gratitude as one of the keys to get your brain into a mode that allows you to let go of grievances, for example. Wow. Okay? To, and that's why it's in this forgiveness book that he wrote. Forgive for Good. Forgive for Good by Fred Luskin. And uh, I have seen this. So, so one of these clients was sitting in my office, and she had... She had actually been in the hospital the week before with a suicide attempt. Oh, no. Okay, so how desperate is she at this point? And I said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to make a list of 50 things for which you are truly and sincerely and genuinely grateful. And she said, I can't do that. I said, like, heck, you can't. (laughs) Right, right. You know, I just knew that she was stuck in her thinking. Yes, you can. And you're going to do it, and that's your next assignment. And when you come and see me tomorrow, I want to see the list. Right. Well, she was a little upset, you know. and That wasn't what she wanted you to hear. No. She, I think she wanted me to join with her in this victim story. I wasn't willing to do it. I knew that her life was better than she knew it was. Oh, yeah. There's abundance that she just wasn't seeing. I wanted her to open her eyes and see it. Mm. Well, she came back the next day. She had three things. I said, that's not enough. I asked for 50. She said, I can't do 50. I can't think of them. I said, let me help you. <laughs> and then we started just talking through things that she hadn't even thought about. And, and, and listeners, look around you right now. You're going to see something for which you are grateful right now. Oh, this is so huge. I, 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 um, I need to do this exercise with a friend of mine not, not too long ago. A friend just, you know, it's, you almost don't want to call him because when you do, right, mm-hmm. they just... They launch into the story. Oh, they launch into the story, and it's this, and it's that, and there's one tragedy after another, and it just went on and on and on. So I, 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 I felt like I hadn't been a good friend, you know, because I just, but so I just listened. I had some, you know, I just listened, and the cell phone battery's running dry, and, you know, and, uh, 
know, I, I, I thought, well, I really want to say something, but I just want to listen. Don't wanna... And, um, and when it was all said and done, I, you know, and we hung up the phone, I just thought, wow. This friend of mine genuinely believes that, that I mm-hmm. personally and other people don't experience tragedy at the same level. The way he does. Yeah, he does, that his life is, and I'm looking at my friend, and he's almost 60, mm-hmm. and I'm thinking about my brother-in-law, who just passed away from tongue cancer, mid-30s, mm. my mother-in-law, who just passed away after just years of battling with diabetes and kidney transplants, and for the last two years of her life, she had uh, shingles on her body, and mm-hmm. she never complained, mm-hmm. and I'm thinking about uh, my, my own father, who just a week ago... Uh, found out that he's got huge growths on one of his kidneys. Going to have to get that thing out. Mm. And I, you know, I just kind of went down this l- this list of of things, and I'm <laughs> thinking these are all part of my life, right? Right. But it it wasn't my list of gratitude things. It was just my I was thinking about my friend who thought I didn't have any problems, and that's why I could be so happy. So you're doing a quick check to see if that might be true. Yeah. So because because I couldn't offer him advice because I don't know his pain was kind of his thing. Mm-hmm. That's right. And I'm like, no, you know, you know what? I think you should be grateful. At least, my dear friend, you're still alive. If you were my brother-in-law, you'd have been gone 30 years ago, mm-hmm. right? That's right. If you're my mother-in-law, you'd have been gone 10 years ago, mm-hmm. and you wouldn't be belly aching, and I wouldn't be listening to you. And it's not that you have more or less problems than I do. We all mm-hmm. got our own package. It's what we focus on. And here you are. It's another day above ground. For you. If you're listening to this podcast and look around you and what is in your world right now Uh, for which you are grateful, what is beautiful in your world right now? Who loves you right now? Right now. What do you see right now that you're grateful for? And so with this client, I walked her through some of it. I said, are you grateful for your dishwasher? She thought for a minute. Yeah, I guess I am. Well, yeah, yeah. Great, put it on the list. I said, look out that window. Do you see that mountain? It's gorgeous. Are you grateful for that? Yeah, I guess I am. Write it down. We started writing things down. Oh, my. By the time we got to 40, 45, she was rolling. She didn't want to stop. Mm. And guess what changed? Everything. Everything. Her whole life changed. She had a new life. And it's not that the world changed. The world is pretty constant. It's she, just they're it doing was what you said thing. earlier. She just tuned in. She tuned in. She got on the right frequency. She, she moved to the front row. She sat in the, mag- in the magic, magic tea. tea. And how appropriate for Thanksgiving. We've got Thanksgiving. That starts with tea. And the magic tea. Tune. Tune in the radio. Starts with tea. Tune it in. Adam. I think we're coming up with a title for this tea, podcast. Yeah. The magic T. But Adam's middle name, name is, is Tyler, Tyler, which starts with, with a T. Tea. Magic. It's the magic T. It's everywhere. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. And the magic T. Thanksgiving. See, in Thanksgiving, we'll sit around. We'll gather together. T. Together. We'll gather together in chairs that are close. We'll be totally connected. And we'll reflect on the things we're thankful for, which will cause great things to happen in our brain. You know, I, I just think that's one of the neat things about coming back to Utah. When I came to Utah the first time, I, those mountains couldn't take my eyes off. Lived here a few years. Lived here for a few years. And um, a little bit of the magic of the mountains rubbed off, you know, kind of kind of diminished. The mountains mm-hmm. hadn't changed, but my willingness to see in them, the awe and splendor I did when I first moved here was diminished somehow. I didn't, I took the, began to take them for granted. And it was actually some mm-hmm. friends from England, family from England, came to visit us. It stood in my backyard with moist eyes, looking at my mountains, who, may, who helped me rediscover them again. And then I thought, ah, I always want to sit here, the magic tea in my backyard, and appreciate the beauty. To refresh your appreciation. To refresh your gratitude. For the abundance that surrounds you. So I can live on purpose. Kirk Weasler. Living on purpose with Dr. Paul. Thank you so much for joining me again. Oh, pleasure. Are you going to promise to come back again? I promise to come back for Yet the new again year. again for another episode of Live on Purpose. For the new year. Go out there, you guys. Have a great Thanksgiving. Enjoy your life and live on purpose. Happy Turkey Day.